So within Microsoft 365, we've covered many of the functionality and a lot of the differences in suites and the way of procuring the license, etc. However, Microsoft has recently and over the period of the past couple of years, slowly been including other products into the M365 family that haven't made it into the Microsoft 365 suites. So if you buy, for instance, an M365 E5 license, we've already covered that calling plans aren't included in that. So if you want to use the voice capabilities of Microsoft 365, you would need to buy additional licenses in the form of calling plans. However, there's many such cases. So in the next few minutes, I want to go through in high level all the other products that Microsoft has been releasing that haven't made it into Microsoft 365 suites which if you would require this functionality would mean buying additional licenses. What we will cover here is Copilot for M365, Entra ID or Intune products, Project and Visio, Teams Premium and Teams Rooms, Teams Premium and Teams Rooms, Viva Suite and Windows 365. So Copilot for M365 is the hot ticket right now. Everybody is talking about large language models. ChatGPT has taken this to the next level and Microsoft has taken a stake in OpenAI and obviously used the GPT model to launch their own set of products and they call that Copilot. And Copilot for M365 is basically an agent that can help you with business productivity, gains, efficiency within any of the the tools that Microsoft has available, like Teams, PowerPoint, Outlook, Word, Excel, and you name it, and probably a co-pilot has been or will have been included in the next coming period. So it's an add-on to Microsoft 365 E3 or E5, Office 365 E3 or E5, or Business Standard and Premium. And it allows multiple co-pilots. So you would have a co-pilot for Teams that would make transcriptions of your meetings, for instance, and then you can search within those meetings or query those meetings. So you can ask, create an action list of everything that was discussed, or can you highlight what this person has said within the meeting, et cetera, et cetera. It also is available for Outlook, where it will help you with your inbox management, and it can help you write summaries of documents or create PowerPoints from Excel documents, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a schematic overview of how Copilot for M365 works. I don't really want to go into all the details of this, but I wanted to add this so you can have a quick look of, as to how Microsoft has set this up. So you see the Copilot tool, and then you insert a certain prompt in one of the tools that has the Copilot available, and then all the magic happens. So it queries the large language model prompt, it searches online for information, it uses the Microsoft Graph API, connects to the data first and power platform services and whatever you need in order to give you back the information that they think you were hopefully looking for or asking for. Another product that Microsoft has been investing in quite heavily is the Entra ID or what we used to call the Azure Active Directory suite of products and the Intune suite of products. And what they've done here is to have actually created two separate suites. On the right hand side is the Intune suite with Intune Plan 2 being the core of this. So Intune, known for mobile device management and mobile access management, which is included in both E3 and E5, but also F3 and F1, has gotten some additional functionality. So Intune Plan 2 is for specialty device management. And in the entire Intune suite, you will find things like remote help, cloud certificate management and endpoint privilege management. Then we have Entra ID governance add-on to Entra ID plan one. Basically this adds another layer around the Entra ID that you are used to from Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 or F3 and F1 and gives you even more functionality to use a certain governance functionality on top of what you are already using, things like entitlement management with verified idea, lifecycle workflows, etc. Now things that have already been out there for a long time is Project and Visio. And Microsoft has obviously already userified these licenses as well, but they've never made it into the Microsoft 365 suite of products. Rather, they've been standalone for a long period of time. So the next product I wanna cover is Teams Premium, where Microsoft has released a lot of products outside of Microsoft 365 suite, with the newest one being Teams Premium. Teams Premium is basically the AI version of Microsoft Teams that you are 
currently using probably because of your E3 and E5 license where the standard Teams application is available to you, but Teams Premium where Microsoft states it will make every meeting more intelligent, engaging, and protected, holds additional functionality that you can see on the right-hand side and through a live caption translation, meeting sensitivity labels, premium events, meeting watermarks, custom meeting templates, and end-to-end -end encryption. So a lot of different type of tools that might make your Teams experience more efficient, better, and secure. You would need, obviously, to have an M365 or O365 license with Microsoft Teams included. And if you are aware of the EEA announcement that Microsoft had to make due to regulations where Microsoft Teams had to be excluded from all the Microsoft 365 and Office 365 suites within the EEA region, then you would need to purchase a separate Microsoft Teams license first in order to be able to use Teams Premium. So you would need to add on this to a Microsoft Teams license. On top of that, Microsoft has some additional functionality for Teams for meeting rooms. So there's a licensing model for Microsoft Teams rooms, um, which comes in the two flavors, Microsoft Teams Rooms Basic, which is basically a free product, but also only allows you 25 units per tenant. And there's a Microsoft Teams Rooms Premium which comes at a yeah, very steep cost, especially if you're aware of the previous licensing model where you had a standard and a pro, where the standard would be around 11 euros per Teams room license. The premium comes in at about 35 euros per Teams room license. So if the basic is not functional, enough to, for you or you already run out of your 25 max per tenant then there's no other choice than buying the teams rooms premium license which again comes at a very premium price but it does include a certain functionality that you might need for your teams rooms like a phone system or to hold security features like Entra ID Plan 1, Defender for Endpoint Plan 2, and the Intune Plan 1. Microsoft also has Team Shared Devices, which used to be called a common area phone. And Team Shared Devices is basically for personnel within your organization that share devices. For instance, a secretary that is the host of your company shares a device with all other company secretaries, helping you or your people that visit your offices with signing in and getting access to the, the correct people within your organization. And it's limited in functionality as well. Definitely opposed to like things like Teams Rooms where you still get the Microsoft Teams license, a phone system, a whiteboard and some security features and the entire Intune plan too, but it doesn't contain audio conferencing or joining WebEx and Zoom, which typically aren't use cases for these types of services. Now, something that Microsoft has invested heavily in is Microsoft Viva, which basically is a suite of products that you can use within Teams, and it's grown quite exponentially. So in this overview, uh, consisting of two slides, I wanna go through the experience areas that Microsoft has set up for this, and the way it translates to the, the Viva applications and the different features that are available and how these tie into the different Microsoft 365 plans, if at all. Because like I said, this is mainly about services that are outside of the Microsoft 365 suites. But for FIVA, it's been a quite of a mix and match of some aspects making it into the suites and some that you need to buy outside of it. So if you look, for instance, at connecting, you have employee communications and communities where Microsoft considers three different applications, FIFA Connections, FIFA Engage, and FIFA Amplify. And for instance, FIFA Connections is a lot of functionality is available within Microsoft 365 suites, but there's some multi-instance support, for instance, that would require you to buy a FIFA suite or a Viva Employee Communications and Communities license. Then, for instance, if you look at Viva Engage, also there you see that some of the functionality for Viva Engage only exists outside of Microsoft 365, like the Leadership Corner and Ask Me Anything and Storyline Delegate Posting, etc. On the growth learning and knowledge management, Viva Learning is generally very much available within Microsoft 365. So Viva Learning App is standard available within Microsoft Teams. You can create learning tabs, Teams channels. You can search within them, share, etc. 
you can use Microsoft Learn and Microsoft 365 training libraries from Teams. And you can do organization generated content with SharePoint and Viva Learning. However, a lot of other functionality is also only available through the Viva Suite or the Viva Learning application add on. Things like course recommendations, integration with partner content, and skills profiles and learning based skills scenarios should cost you an additional premium of at least $4 per user per month if you're just buying that standalone FIFA learning license. Then on the inside work aspect, the workplace analytics and employee feedback, FIFA Insights is mainly available through Microsoft 365. There's just some additional functionality that you would require to buy via FIFA Suite license or FIFA Workplace Analytics or FIFA Insights license. Then we have FIFA Pulse and FIFA Glint. These are only available in the their standalone plans or as FIFA Suite license. So if you want to create, distribute and customize team surveys through FIFA Pulse, you can only do that if you buy the standalone license for workplace analytics or if you buy a FIFA Suite license. FIFA Glint using the employee engagement surveys, employee lifecycle surveys, customizable dashboards, benchmarks, etc. That's only available through buying a FIFA Glint license, FIFA Workplace Analytics license, or a FIFA Suite. Now, if we look towards the experience area of purpose, so goal setting and OKR management, Microsoft created a tool called FIFA Goals, and that FIFA Goals application is not generally available within Teams, it would require you to buy that FIFA Goals license or a FIFA Suite license. And then you would get all the functionality that is available within FIFA Goals. And finally, the same for FIFA Learning, so the learning and knowledge management experience area. If you want to have the availability of the FIFA Learning application, you would either need to buy the FIFA Employee Communications and Communities plan or you would again need to invest in the FIFA suite, which would get you answers in FIFA people in FIFA topics in FIFA and skills in FIFA. Now, finally, Windows 365, not generally talked about very much, so I will keep it short here as well. But basically, this is a product that Microsoft has released to yeah, simplify actually the whole Azure virtual desktop motion, where, which could be considered to be difficult to set up, um, but it is your Windows 365 cloud PC, basically. So there's some flavors here that you have to choose from in order to set up your cloud PCs. So you have a Windows 365 for business, which is for a maximum of 300 users, which you're used to by now from the business side of things, which is only for small and mid-sized enterprises. If cloud-only management, the user's roles are configurable and you have an intra ID join, uh, it supports Windows 10 and 11, and you can optionally bring your own licenses to potentially reduce the cost of these through the Windows hybrid benefit. And then uh, there's some monthly outbound data caps. On the other hand, you have the Windows 365 enterprise and frontline licenses, and there's no limit of users, so you can buy as many as you need or require. It's managed through Intune or hybrid. User roles are configurable. Intra ID or domain joins. It supports Windows 10 and 11, and it requires a certain qualifying licenses. So you would require a Windows Enterprise license with Microsoft Intune license and an Intra ID Plan 1 license. You either connect through Azure VNet or monthly outbound data cap, similar on the left hand side. And Microsoft Managed Desktop has been supported, and you can use custom Windows images, and it has Windows print integration. So on the configuration side, basically you would require to make certain design decisions. So you would first choose the amount of processors that you require. Based on that, the memory is set. Unless you choose two virtual CPUs, then you have two options here. And then you choose the amount of storage that you require per config. Now, how does this compare to Azure Virtual Desktop? So again, on the first two columns, you see Windows 365 Business and Windows 365 Enterprise and Frontline, the way we just discussed. But we've added the third column for Azure Virtual Desktop. Whereas Windows 365 is generally software as a service, so it's all as a packaged as a product. So you can use the software as a SaaS service. With Azure Virtual Desktop, this is a PaaS service or platform as a service. Windows 365 is a user subscription-based product, so you would assign that to named users. 
Azure Virtual Desktop works on consumption base through Azure. So you pay as you go or you pay for only for what you require. The Windows 365 service then also predict about a flat rate because you know what price you are going to pay per user. Whereas Azure Virtual Desktop can be variable through increase in cost for networking, storage, compute, and configuration and deployment. Windows 365 is generally managed for business through the online portal, for enterprise through Intune management, and Azure Virtual Desktop is uh, Azure Virtual Desktop native, but can also be managed through Citrix or v uh, VMware. Management complexity is very specialized within Azure Virtual Desktop, whereas as a SaaS service, it becomes somewhat more simple depending on either business or enterprise. Microsoft calls out a few skill sets that are required. So for business, they state no desktop skills are required for Windows 365 enterprise and frontline you would use yeah, commodity desktop skills and for azure virtual desktop you would be in need of specialized vdi skills so you would definitely need to have a lot of it experience operating systems generally windows obviously single session desktops with azure virtual desktop it would be server single or multi-session. And finally, the desktop experience is very personal for all three, whereas Azure Virtual Desktop, you could also go for a pooled or an app streaming setup. So those were the basics for you know, all the services that exist outside of the Microsoft 365 suites. So anything that I've missed, I'd love to, to hear from you. But basically, so far, what we know right now, these are all the products that Microsoft licenses outside of Microsoft 365 suites.